Hey there, I'm Steve Dodge and this is the Vibram Disc Golf video blog. This week we're going to go through disc golf things that matter. We've got a brand new haiku from Jory Reed. We're going to talk about what par is in disc golf and maybe where we should evolve par to. TD of the week, we'll go through our broken disc of the week and we'll finish out with some music to putt by and I'm going to present the music to putt by in a new way. I'm going to talk about the music to putt by and see if you can guess it before I say it. So, disc golf things that matter. Um, this is the Discraft Phantom. I don't know if you can see that very well. It's white on white. This was one of my first non-Innova discs. Basically what this disc represents is it represents uh, that the sport is going to attract more manufacturers into modern golf discs. And uh, Discraft brought, them, brought, brought us that way with the Phantom. Um, they had a blockbuster hit with the, uh, the Cyclone. Uh, Whammo produced the 91. Lightning produced the F-15. And the ball started rolling. In the last five or ten years, as I'm sure we all know, the number of people that have manufactured PDGA-approved discs has skyrocketed. We're up to 45 different manufacturers with PDGA-approved discs. The, DG, the Discraft Phantom started the ball rolling thanks to Discraft for getting, uh, for getting more manufacturers into uh, the modern version of the sport. That is one of the things that matter. The fact that we have 45 manufacturers in the sport, that's pretty exciting. Our Disc Golf Haiku of the Week, first of all, big kudos to Jory Reed. You are the winner of this signed dollar bill. And uh, if you email me your address, we will send this to you. And for next week's winner, you can have that signed dollar bill. Jory's Haiku, I will read it to you now. This is phenomenal. Smashes the basket. Always blowing up the chains. Never misses a putt. I love that, Jory. Thank you very, very much. So, this week the big discussion is about par. And uh, when we think about par, we need to think about uh, ball golf, which, is, uh, which brings a lot of nuance into disc golf. So, we've got disc golf started out basically as all par threes. Ball golf, par 72. They've got par threes, fours, and fives. What is par to disc golf and what should par be? Where should we evolve par? Um, so I went to Wikipedia and uh, the definition of par according to Wikipedia is the number of strokes that a scratch golfer should require to complete a hole. In disc golf we expanded the term scratch golfer to include uh, the level of the player that the course was designed for. So for a gold level course, yes, it's the scratch golfer. For a beginner course, we go ahead and set par for a beginner. That's a much more inclusive way to do par. It's very progressive. It allows people to recognize that they are succeeding and getting better. It's, it's easier for them to recognize that they are succeeding and getting better. The, uh, the one, that's, good, that's good news for players and for courses because people like to succeed. The one downside to that is that we don't have a consistent par. Par has to be defined based on this is a red level course, par is set for a red level player. It's important that courses, um, when they establish the par for a course, they also establish the skill level for the course. And they need to uh, get both of those bits of information to their players. So that's departure number one from the ball golf par. Basically par is based on the skill level of the player and not the skill level of scratch golfers. Um, imagine when you're skiing, you go to a, a ski slope, you have black diamond there, you know that that means that's a tough, a tough slope. Basically we're combining that skiing, those skiing icons with the concept of par. So that's, uh, I think, and I think it's a, a very good step for disc golf. Um, in ball golf, the way par is determined, par is basically the number of shots to get to the green plus two. In disc golf, we have a 10 meter circle that defines our green. Um, and 
what what we do inside the green, you would hope to just putt once. So our par would be the number of shots to get inside the circle plus one. That's kind of an awkward way to do it because on a 250 foot hole, you're going to get inside the circle on your first shot, so that would be a par two. Um, I don't want to get into the discussion about whether par two or not is legit, but in my opinion, par two is kind of ridiculous. You, there's almost no way to birdie that. So um, let's just say we want things to be par three, but if we do that, then we can't have the concept of our green being 10 meters. So that is where the concept of close range par comes in. Close range par, you define uh, how, how close you, you are going to be when a pro, or when somebody of that skill level, is going to get it in in two shots. Then close range par becomes the number of shots to get the disc close, or on the expanded green, plus two. So for example, you have a 300 foot hole, and for a gold level player, you have a 100 foot close range. So your first drive is going to get within 100 feet, then you add two. So you have one shot to get inside the close range, then you have your two putt and approach shots. And that's the way that uh, close range par defines par in disc golf. It's also set up so that based on um, your skill level, the distances are tweaked. I have a quick chart here. I'm going to hold it up. I don't know if John's going to get this zoom in on this. So right here, you can see the different levels, starting from green, red, white, blue, gold. And this is how far people in that skill level can drive. So green players can drive about 210 feet accurately. Eh, who knows if accurately is right. And then gold uh, players can drive about 400 feet. Close range is defined as this. So, and then uh, a fairway throw is defined as this. And then if I move this up a little bit, uh, for a gold, the longest possible par 3 for a gold player is therefore 500 feet, which is just 400 plus 100. For a green player, the longest possible par 3 is 210 feet plus 60. If it goes longer than that, it's a par 4. And the way you get the longest possible par 4 is 210 feet plus 60 plus a fairway drive. So that is the way that close range par works and you can establish close range par for the various different levels um, of your players. At Maple Hill we have a red, white, blue, and gold course. Each course is designed for players of those skill levels and the par is set based on the players skill level that the course was designed for. Me being a, I'm a blue level player, if I play the red course the par doesn't really apply to me but I know that I should shoot under par because the, the par is set for a red level player. If I play the blue course, I want to get par. If I play the gold course, I just want to finish. So, um, departure number two from ball golf par is we've got to change the concept of the green to close range, or we can say expand the green. So, those are the two departures with a close range par for disc golf does from ball golf. The next, la the last thing that I want to discuss is what should par be on an 18 hole course. In ball golf it's pretty well understood that par is 72. Uh, sometimes you have courses at 68, sometimes 74, but in general 70 to 72 is where par should be uh, traditionally. In disc golf where should par be? Let's figure that out. Um, the way that I want to do this, in, in, in ball golf, they've, in general you've got four par fives, you've got nine, no, you've got ten par fours, generally five of them are long par fours and five of them are short par fours, and then you've got four par threes. Add all that up, you get 72. Let's look at a par five. Stay with me here. It's a little bit of math, but stay with me. Let's look at a par five in ball golf. You've got your drive, you've got your fairway drive, you have your approach, and then you have your two putts. You got your five shots. In disc golf, that's going to look like a drive, a fairway approach, uh, a fairway drive. We only have one fairway drive, remember. And then you have your approach and your putt. It's actually a long par four. A par five in disc golf doesn't make sense unless you want to equate that to a par six in ball golf. Drive, fairway, 
and then you have your approach and two putts. In disc golf, it's going to be a simply a drive of fairway, and the approach is actually a close range shot, approach and putt. It becomes a long par four. So what that does, instead of having our four par fives, like they do in uh, ball golf, we're going to have four long par fours. And uh, the five long par fours become five short par fours, uh, just because our close range is defined as, as one of the approach shots. And then uh, the five short par fours become long par threes, and the four par threes become short par threes. So basically, we end up having uh, four long par fours, ten, no, no, nine par fours and nine par threes, the way it ends up. And the par target par that I would put out there is 63. That's what we want to shoot for. Um, Players will end up taking 18 drives, 9 fairway shots, 18 approaches, and 18 putts. And the putt and approach can be put together as the close range shots, so 36 close range shots. Total par of 63. Uh, in short, if you own a course or you go to a course and you want to set par properly based on skill level, the first thing you need to do is to determine who the course is designed for. This works also if you are designing a course. Who the course is designed for, what's the skill level. Then you determine your par, then you label the course, green, red, white, blue, or gold, and then you put up T signs that say this is red and the par is four. And there you go. Um, in my opinion, disc golf should evolve into par 63. Just like ball golf, there can be some variation there. You could go down to par 60, you could go up to par 65, 66. Um, but when you get to par 72, basically you're incorporating a lot of par 6s that they would have in ball golf. That's a lot of throws for players, and it doesn't take into account the fact that we only get use one putt as opposed to the two putts that they have in ball golf. So that is my discussion for today. Feel free to add your comments below. We'd love to know what you think about this. Let's take a quick break. I love the quick break. Okay. So, our TD of the week this week is Jason Smith. I'm not really taking a break now. Um, I'd like to say thanks to, uh, to John, our special cameraman. If you, uh, if you ever call in, you might get a hold of him. So anyway, our TD of the week this week is Jason Smith, uh, who ran Journey Post 1, the Journey Post, the first tournament. And uh, I, did, I did a little research this week, Jason, and uh, you actually deserve this, as you probably know. But you run an event that has great food, great atmosphere, very well-groomed course, very organized, a lot of good staff, um, and, uh, and it's all held in Branson, Missouri. Talk about a spot in the middle of nowhere. If you've ever been to Branson, it's just like a, a big plain with absolutely no buildings anywhere. There's nothing in Branson. It's shocking that he even got 94 players, not to mention some of the best players in the world. Um, so, thank you, Jason, for running a phenomenal event, bringing some of the best players to Branson, Missouri. Goodness knows why they would ever go to Branson otherwise. And for being organized, providing great food, and a great atmosphere for disc golf. Thank you very much to Jason. I'd like to make a quick note. Actually, Branson, Missouri is a very good tourist spot, and that was all kind of an April Fool's joke. We're recording this yesterday, just so you know. Or is it today? If you watch this in two days, if we're recording this. Anyway, our broken disc of the week. Here is our broken disc of the week. This is submitted to us from Wallace H. And he wrote to us, It was too cold for the DX AVR. I should have used a Vibram. Well, Wallace, you have got a Vibram Summit on, your, on its way to you. Congratulations. And closing out with our music to putt by. This song was number one for nine weeks when it first came out. In 2012, in the UK, it was voted the nation's favorite number one song of all time. This is a very good song to putt by. It has no chorus at all. It's got ballads, it's got guitar solos, kick butt guitar solos, opera, rock, hard rock and roll. This song kicks. Um, 
It is the UK's number three song of all time. Do you know what it is yet? I'm just a poor boy from a poor family. Let me go! We will not let you go! Let me go! We will not let you go! Ah!